Broadway's one singular sensation has finally made it back to Los Angeles as the national touring production of the Broadway revival of A Chorus Line is now playing at the Amundsen Theater here in downtown Los Angeles. With the show on Broadway announcing that it'll close in August, the touring company is left to carry the torch of Michael Bennett's classic musical. I had a chance to go backstage here at the Amundsen with the cast of A Chorus Line to talk about their feelings of this timeless show. It's a dream come true for me, it really is. I was thinking about it today that, you know, they're, that this show will close on Broadway now and then we will be the only company out. And I'll, I'll never forget seeing it for the first time and thinking, oh my God, that could be me someday. And uh, standing there every night and singing that musical mirror number is just magical for me. And I think it will be to audiences too. I thought I knew it. I'd auditioned for it a couple times. You know, like I was like, everyone knows a chorus line. Um, but I didn't quite get it until I saw the revival about a month after it opened last year. And I didn't realize how stylized it was, and there was just a lot of things. And I wasn't so not prepared for my reaction at the end. The finale started, and I just started sobbing. And I kind of said, I have to do this show. It's just, it really got to me. I think originally, because Michael Bennett's vision was so singular, he knew, even though he didn't know what form it wanted, he wanted it to take, he knew that he wanted to tell these people's story. And I think that always, throughout the entire process, he, he remained very honest to the truth of these characters and to, to their essence. And I think that that's what people fall in love with, is they actually fall in love with each individual personality on the line. Zach, I think, is the um, catalyst for the show. I don't think it's really about him at all. I mean, it becomes more about him in relation to Cassie's journey. But I always feel that he's not, the story's not about him. It's not, um, and actually the more, uh, the more I've sort of experienced it, uh, I've realized that the less one sort of imbues the point of view, or, or has a strong point of view, the more powerful the show is because it really does put the, um, the audience's attention on the people on the line, whose real story it is, those 17 people who are standing on the line. Cassie's so in such an intense character, and it is, it's, you know, you're always compared to Donna McKechnie or Charlotte D'Ambois or, or whomever it is that was someone's favorite Cassie. But for me, it was one of those parts growing up as a child, that it's, it's, the, it's the iconic dance part, it is what you said. Um, and, uh, and I, was, I was lucky to get a lead in a Broadway show when I was 21 and get a little excited about that and move out to LA and try to do that thing. And it didn't work out and I went back to New York to dance again as well. So I have a very similar Cassie story and it gets, uh, it's very cathartic and very deep and therapeutic every night to do it. He's had a rough life. I think he knows he's near the end of his dancing career. Um, he kind of thinks it's ridiculous that he's being put through this whole audition. So. He's kind of making fun of it as he goes along, but he also desperately wants the job and is um, extremely proud and knows he's a good dancer. And yeah, you know, so I, I'm trying, I'm, I try not to uh, ham it up too much. That's kind of what I go for every night. I see Sheila as a woman who has relied on her sexuality and a woman who's relied on her looks for most of her career. I mean, she's talented, no question. She's a hard worker, no question. But she is now nearing the end of being able to just ride on those looks. And I think it's terrifying for her. A five, six, seven, eight. because coming from Legally Blonde where I was jumping rope and not really 
dancing per se. I had sort of thrown my technique out the window and I couldn't afford to go to dance class for several hours a day and then go try to do the jump rope number. There was just no way. So I, getting myself back in shape to do this kind of a show, whipping myself into shape, if you will, which we shouldn't, but um, has been a process. After standing on that line, which is much more challenging, uh, it's, it's also, I think it's a good thing that I was on the line first because I appreciate so much what those 17 dancers are doing and characters are doing and how much focus and, and energy it takes. Uh, that if the only thing that I can do is, is sit out in the house and support them energetically and emotionally, that's the least I can do. It's the phys most physically challenging show I've ever done. But I'm finding now that I've been doing it for a while, it's, um, I'm finding it's just staying present for two hours. You know, after I say my name, there's about half an hour where I stand there without saying a word. So really challenging myself to just stay in character and, um, and not give a canned performance, it's really, it, it's tough. It's, it, Beyond, beyond the physical challenge, um, you feel drained emotionally at the end, I think, if you really put yourself in it. I went in the beginning with the open calls and I got cut. They were just like, bye. <laughs> and I went in again for, I think, Christine and Sheila. And they were just like, absolutely not. You are not a Christine. And, uh, but they loved my Sheila. So then I went in for the Sheila Cassie standby. So I did the whole Cassie scene, the whole Cassie song, the whole Cassie dance, all of Sheila. And then they had me come in again later on for the Sheila Cassie, no, Sheila Val Judy cover. <laughs> So I did basically a 35 minute one woman performance of a chorus line. I was literally, I was like, do you guys have the Connie sides? Because I haven't done those yet. I think I went in eight times total. Um, I went to an open call at one point and then I was up for a bunch of different roles. And then, like I said, I mean, I was working for the company in New York. Um, they knew me really well and I had to go in and do the Greg monologue for all these people I was already working for. So, I mean, that was nerve-wracking in and of itself. I was actually initially up in the revival for Val at, in the first place and um, ended up not getting it. Jessica Lee Golden went on to do a wonderful job. And uh, then went and did Legally Blonde and sometimes, you know, the universe has a plan for you and I had an amazing time doing that. And then Jay Binder called me in to say, ask if I'd want to go on tour and at the time I was very happy at Legally Blonde and thought no way and then they said for Cassie. I said, oh, well, okay, well that's a different story. So, yeah, so then I came to the audition and I had to learn all the entire song and dance and perform it alone on the stage at the theater. And uh, luckily, I got it. Well, I think Michael Bennett was a genius and there's very few geniuses out there. And his genius was his ability to eliminate and to, uh, there is nothing ex ex extraneous or superfluous with the show, nothing. It is perfect. And so you start to mess around with that and uh, the power of the show um, starts to diminish. And I think that that's one thing with the revival, the original Broadway revival, I know that Bob was, was thinking about, well, let's kind of, let's, let's bring new things into it. Let's see what people bring to it. And that was, that was fine, and people did bring something new to it. But I think what they saw is that actually the show was not quite as um, um, sharp because those iconic characters are iconic for a reason. downtown Los Angeles at the Amundsen Theater. I'm James Sims for BroadwayWorld.com.